to have lots of measurements and to track uh, how these things evolve over the life cycle of individuals and over the life uh, and over uh, history. And I'll stop. Okay. That. Thank you very much. Just a uh... some empirical evidence of what you're saying. Uh, I have been uh, brought up in Salerno, uh, so in Campania, and uh, um, actually uh, I can tell you about in Balzi how it is carried out in uh, middle schools and also first year of high school. Uh, differently from Friuli Venezia Giulia, where I also have some friends. Well, in Friuli Venezia Giulia, talking about institutional design, uh, the Varsis test is actually uh, what uh, is coming at, you know, at some, you know it's going to come at some point during the year and the whole cur st uh, school curriculum is actually tailored towards also the Varsis uh, and this applies to PISA as well uh, so meaning uh, the, school system, the, the schools differently in the south and the north while we were doing in Varsis during the hour of recreazione in Friuli Venezia Giulia, they were actually having the entire curriculum for the entire year uh, tailored towards that. So there is also a big institutional design problem uh, and how you know, serious we actually take the, these tests. Uh, and it's a shame that actually it's being boycotted uh, throughout, uh, throughout the, the country. So from uh, the human capital formation side, uh, we will now move to the presentation by Professor Guisa. Uh, so I've also, my background is economics. So when I did my master's thesis in Barcelona, actually a professor Luis uh, papers, well, all over uh, my economic history thesis. Uh, you can use this one if you want. Uh, and they, they are, you know, together with also uh, his colleagues, uh, Sapienza and Zingales, they have uh, they are actually the pioneers also in this literature on social capital and culture and economics. So I'll just yield the floor to Professor. Thank you very much. And, um, uh, it's a great pleasure. Uh, I was a student here at the LSE as well, uh, many years ago. Uh, and actually, uh, when I was uh, doing my master's here, uh, I was a fan of the Italian society. It was already there at the time. And, you know, I. At the time, I think I would have never predicted and forecasted that one day I would have been invited to give us uh, a talk here. So let me say that, first of all, I am uh, very much willing to sign the petition for uh, uh, Widow Uh Secondly, I enjoyed uh, the photographs. Um, and there is nothing uh, in what I'm going to say that is more emotional than uh, uh, those beautiful black and white uh, uh, photos. Uh, third, that uh, the topic is, uh, you know, it's topical, it's a kind of uh, old, in the sense that it's uh, um, north-south divide has been uh, kind of uh, uh, very persistent. Uh, uh, but it's important to uh, know one feature, that it has not always uh, been uh, there. At a certain point, the north was the south, and the south was the, uh, the north, around, you know, year 1000. Uh, Palermo was the largest uh, uh, city in Europe and was also the wealthiest. So that means that over the long term there could be great uh, reversals. That one needs to be very patient. Okay. So uh, I'm going to uh, give um, uh, probably a less modest uh, uh, presentation than uh, uh, Orazio. So he's super expert in what he said. I'm not expert in what I'm going to say, but you know, I'm going to. Uh, to push it a little bit. Uh, so, and I'm going to talk about two divides, the Italian one, and then I will mention the link to the, uh, uh, the title of the, the conference, the European uh, Perspective. And uh, as, as I'm going to argue, that I think a much more worrying uh, divide, uh, not within Italy, but within uh, uh, Europe. Uh, so, uh, you know. It is well known, I, I think I'm saying nothing, that there is a big economic divide within uh, Italy. Uh, in the sense that, you know, if you look at uh, differences in uh, GDP per capita between North and South, the South has twice as uh, much, more or less, uh, uh, GDP per capita. Today, 
uh, then uh, the motors are twice as much as, uh, as the south. And there is a big uh, divide in the measures of uh, civicness. That is, if you look at uh, measures of mutual trust, blood donations, electoral alternative, referendum, and many others, and I'm going to show some features, uh, that uh, you know, there is a, uh, as much as an economic divide as a, a divide of civicness. Both are enduring, in the sense that they are. Uh, very long lasting. Uh, if you look at it's very difficult to document uh, you know, blood donations uh, 200 years ago. There was no statistics, there, uh, there was no mention of that. But uh, uh, there is evidence looking at books uh, about the structure of society that produces uh, uh, these outcomes, uh, and you get the sense that uh, even 200 years ago, the South was a kind of liquid type of. Uh, society, much less tight than it was uh, uh, the North. Uh, and as I said, you know, so both are enduring and there is no sign of convergence, neither uh, uh, the level of the economy nor at the level of uh, these uh, uh, measures of uh, uh, C. So the gap uh, is still uh, uh, there. This is the economic gap. So if you look at the wealthiest, uh, zero is Italy, so these are percentage deviations. From, uh, from Italy, so this is uh, Bolzano, 41% higher GDP per capita than uh, Italy. Uh, this, uh, I think, is Calabria, it's where uh, Orazio comes from. There is no causality here, <laughs> yeah, it's just randomness. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and this is uh, almost 37% uh, below uh, Italian average. The more you go south, the lower is uh, the level of GDP uh, per capita. So this is the economic divide. Uh, this is the civic capital divide, levels of blood donation, darker areas, uh, more uh, 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 donations, uh, unilateral uh, donations of uh, uh, blood uh, per, uh, per capita. And notice that uh, uh, this is a purely voluntary measure of uh, what you can contribute uh, to an insurance uh, uh, mechanism, essentially. You know, you're donating blood that can benefit somebody that uh, potentially may need it without any counterparts. So there is nothing that you receive uh, uh, in exchange. So it's not driven by economic motives. Um, the pure uh, selfish behavior would say that nobody should donate his own uh, blood, maybe the blood of somebody <laughs> else. Uh, this is a referendum turnout of the same type of uh, nature. Uh, if you are selfish, you don't go you know, to participate in a referendum, you don't even vote because you are uh, marginal, so you count nothing, you are not uh, decisive uh, unless you are really the marginal, uh, uh, the marginal guy, but nobody believes it. Uh, so all you see is that there is much more participation in referenda uh, in the north than in the south. Again, another measure of uh, uh, civicness. And this is the uh, picture that I like a lot. Uh, here is another uh, uh, measure of the same, uh, uh, the same thing is the number of non profit organizations uh, 62 uh, per capita in the north, uh, 36 uh, in the south. This is a measure of how much people trust each other. 42% uh, of the people in the north trust the others, uh, uh, whereas only half of it uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the south. Uh, this picture uh, is Italy in the 13th uh, uh, century when uh, the country was, uh, you know, bifurcating, uh, and here was uh, the North was, uh, you know, flourishing and uh, uh, creating this uh, system of uh, free cities uh, that were endowed with a number of democratic institutions. The South instead went. Uh, under uh, a system or subsequent system of hierarchical uh, 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 governance, uh, uh, mostly sometimes uh, even by foreign uh, uh, by foreign domination. What is going on? Okay. Uh, and that is a story uh, that, according to Robert Patton, uh, is a political scientist at Harvard University, explains uh, the. Uh, divide in uh, civicness uh, and according to him the economic divide uh, today. So does it uh, matter? 
uh, you know, this difference in civicness? Apparently, yes, in the sense that they correlate the quality of institutions. So there is more corruption in the South, the rule of law is worse in the South, the quality, the regulatory quality is worse in the South, and the government effectiveness is worse in the South than uh, in the North. And actually, it was precisely the failure of uh, you know, the system of regional governance that attracted uh, Tottenham at the time and asking uh, you know, why it succeeds uh, in the north uh, but fails uh, uh, in the south. Uh, it matters for uh, uh, financial development. In a uh, paper with my co-authors, we are showing that you know, this difference in uh, measures of civicness, like you know, blood donations, they are uh, correlated uh, with uh, uh, banks' willingness uh, to lend to, uh, to people. It is easier where there is uh, more blood donations to get uh, uh, a loan uh, on better terms. There is a more intense uh, use of checks, which is another way of uh, saying that people trust uh, uh, each other. And they tend to use less cash and is much more uh, uh, people are more willing to invest in, uh, uh, in equity uh, markets. There is a better function in democratic mechanisms. There is an interesting paper by Guido Tabellini and a couple of authors where they show that uh, in places where there is more uh, of this uh, civicness, uh, it is more likely that uh, voters withdraw the vote when uh, the member of parliament has been uh, charged with a criminal uh, prosecution or uh, high absenteeism uh, rates. Uh, and there is less uh, uh, shirking on, uh, uh, on the job. Uh, here uh, they were looking at an interesting uh, uh, experiment. They were looking people, taking people from the north that went south within the same organization, and vice versa, people that uh, within the same organization, I think was uh, uh, a bank, was uh, probably unit credit, that from the north were sent uh, uh, to the south. And they were showing that systematically people that uh, came from the south tended to uh, share more uh, uh, on the job than uh, their own uh, colleagues uh, in the place of destination. Uh, now, there are two views uh, uh, about you know, why there are these uh, big differences in, uh, uh, in civicness. The first one is associated to uh, Robert Patton. Um, uh, at least one of the explanations that is put forward is that uh, there are uh, tighter links uh, among people in the north. Partly because, uh, you know, in the north, uh, uh, when there were, there were these free cities, they were creating uh, uh, these um, uh, leagues, uh, these uh, uh, guilds. Uh, and so he said, you know, tighter links, uh, uh, better networks that keep society together and that fosters uh, uh, civic capital. So this is the network theory of the civic capital formation. Uh, the alternative is, uh, is that there are actually different cultures in the sense that uh, what characterizes people of uh, these societies is the fact that they share different types of uh, norms. And that was the uh, kind of approach that was followed by Edward Banfield. Uh, he is an anthropologist that studied a particular community in, uh, uh, in one of the southern uh, cities. Now, I don't find the first explanation fully convincing, in the sense that uh, there are uh, some networks that are very tight, that are very spread out in the north, uh, and are not all that uh, uh, good, and actually they are very detrimental. Uh, so, I think that the second one is, uh, uh, is a better and uh, closer to the truth uh, uh, explanation. Uh, it is important to know what is the, uh, the driver. So, uh, Banfield's uh, explanation was the following. So, watching these uh, peasants in this uh, particular town, as uh, anthropologists do, they, you know, uh, they do a sort of microscopic uh, analysis, different from you know, economists that look at big data, you know, put them together, run a regulation, and forget about, look at the correlation, forget about all the other data points. Um, and what he was uh, looking at was uh, uh, the following observation. There are uh, primitive societies where the level of biological well-being, so the amount of income that these people have, uh, can even be lower. They are less goods, uh, uh, fewer staff, but in which uh, people are not so chronically unhappy as uh, in the place that he was uh, uh, looking at. What makes the difference between a low level of living and la miseria? that these people felt comes from culture. 
And the conclusion that he drew was, unlike the primitive, the peasant feels himself part of a larger society, which he is in, in the sense that you know, he is there, but he doesn't belong to. So he has no sense of belonging to the society where he is uh, living, where he is uh, surviving. Now, this is close to the modern concept of uh, self-efficacy, which is the belief uh, that uh, people have regarding their own, uh, their own power to affect uh, effectively uh, a situation. So to be kind of uh, empowered and having the sense of uh, that they can, if they put effort, they can achieve uh, uh, a goal. And we show that uh, um, a measure of self-efficacy in a, uh, the, the population of Italian uh, fifth grade uh, uh, students uh, taken from this uh, Invalsi uh, questionnaires uh, uh, that uh, Horacio was uh, mentioning is correlated uh, with these measures of uh, civic capital uh, uh, across uh, uh, cities like, you know, the uh, fraction of organ donations uh, in whether uh, people uh, tend to cheat in uh, the math uh, uh, tests uh, uh, or not. Now, let me, uh, you know, let me lay this background, uh, uh, raise another question, and whether uh, is the South, uh, uh, the backwardness of the South, the key uh, problem in Italy uh, uh, today? Uh, this was a big debate in the 70s uh, and in the 1980s when uh, you know, the South was sometimes perceived to be a sort of prisoner ball and, uh, uh, and chain, a parallel, uh, a parallel theory. Now it's no longer uh, uh, true. That is not uh, the source of Italy's problem today is not uh, the South. Uh, it's not a local uh, problem. Um, the, the, the Italy's today's problem is a national uh, uh, problem. It is the fact that there is lack of growth in income, uh, and most worrying is the fact that uh, total factor of productivity over the past 20 25 years uh, is sort of uh, uh, flat. And this is uniformly so. From a geographical point of view, it is so, uh, you know, across industries, uniform across all industries, uh, it is the country that uh, is not. Uh, you know, no longer a uh, uh, function. If you look at the pattern, so this is the uh, profile of uh, total fact uh, of uh, GDP per hour and this total factor of productivity in a bunch of countries, Italy is the red, uh, the red profile. As you can see, um, you know, uh, together with Spain, it doesn't perform all that uh, uh, well. It's really an exception, even uh, within, uh, uh, within Europe. Uh, it's not due, as I said, to worsening in the South. This is a ratio of productivity per worker, the North divided by the South, uh, is pretty constant. The differences are uh, relatively minor. And actually, if anything, is uh, going down. So it seems that it's the North that is uh, worsening rather than, uh, uh, than the South. Uh, it's not a reflection of the industry structure. If you you know, re-aggregate uh, the sectoral productivity using the weights uh, uh, of the uh, specialization pattern of France or uh, Germany, you get exactly the same, uh, the same pattern. So it has to do with, uh, uh, with the country. One can, uh, um, you know, ask the reverse uh, question, and whether uh, is Italy problem the main problem for the South today? Uh, and my impression is that there is an element of uh, truth uh, in, uh, this, uh, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this issue. Um, if you look at the gap between the two areas, uh, you know, for uh, uh, the South to be able to catch up uh, with the level of GDP per capita uh, uh, in the North, uh, it would require uh, the South to grow faster than the North at 2% uh, uh, per year, for 40 years. Uh, so, you know, it is possible, it's not impossible, but it's clearly, you know, very hard, it's very <coughs> unlikely, it's difficult. Uh, here is where, you know, probably this uh, civicness uh, um, differential uh, may, uh, may, uh, may matter. Now, this is much harder when uh, the whole country 
stagnate. You know, uh, bridging the gap is much more difficult when there is also, in addition to a local problem, there is a national uh, problem. <coughs> uh, usually, it's more difficult to tackle two problems at the same time rather than one uh, uh, by one. And secondly, empirically, the only convergence uh, between the two areas uh, took place only when uh, you know, the country was uh, booming uh, uh, during uh, the economic uh, miracle. So this is a growth rate, uh, and this is the difference between the growth in the south and the growth in the north. Uh, as you can see, is uh, positive, meaning that there was some uh, uh, some convergence. But the only convergence was precisely when the country was growing uh, uh, sufficiently, uh, sufficiently, sufficiently fast. Uh, and there has been no worsening during uh, the crisis. That is, uh, the crisis actually was hit in the north uh, more heavily than, uh, than, uh, uh, than the south, and the reason is really uh, intuitive, is that most of the industry is uh, in the north, 70%, uh, and uh, there was a dramatic uh, drop uh, in industrial uh, production that uh, went down by something like 25 to 30%. Okay? Now, let me move on uh, to the other divide uh, and uh, mention the Europe's uh, uh, divide. So, Italy's north-south north uh, you know, is super interesting, it concerns us, but my impression is that we have to take uh, a different perspective and abandon a little bit this, uh, uh, this debate. Uh, Europe to us, uh, it's all north, north uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and south. And this, uh, in nature, is very similar to, the, uh, to our local uh, within-country uh, divide. It is an economic divide. Uh, GDP per capita in Germany is uh, twice uh, as large uh, as uh, in uh, Greece. And uh, worse than that uh, is wider, and I will document it in a couple of uh, seconds. It is also a cultural uh, divide with elements that are very similar uh, to the ones that characterize the north-south divide in, uh, uh, in Italy. Trust in Germany is 38% uh, of the people trust others, 24%. In, uh, uh, in Greece. This is a picture uh, uh, from a paper with uh, uh, Elios where uh, we try to provide a cultural table explanation for the European crisis. Uh, it's quite interesting and uh, let me spend uh, one second in explaining what it is. So uh, this is uh, uh, the behavior in a public good games uh, of a sample of individuals from various countries. So essentially, the public good game uh, mimics uh, you know, the contribution to build uh, some public uh, uh, good. And the way it works is that uh, everyone has an endowment and has to decide how much uh, to put in the pot in order to uh, build this uh, public, uh, uh, the public good. Now, um, in uh, one of these experiments, uh, um, People are given the possibility of punishing uh, the others if they don't contribute. Okay? So, uh, and they do this punishment at their own uh, cost. So what happens is that uh, uh, in Germany, uh, when uh, there is a deviant, a person that uh, doesn't contribute to the public good, there is another German uh, that uh, punishes him. And the punishment, you know, uh, has a very powerful uh, effect because it is disciplining uh, the others uh, and inducing them to contribute. And not surprisingly, uh, uh, in Bonn, uh, they produce a lot of public good. Now, what happens in Greece is quite uh, remarkable. Uh, these people, when there is uh, somebody uh, that uh, is contributing less, they don't punish him. Uh, but they punish when the guy is contributing more than... Uh, uh, so there is anti-social uh, uh, behavior. Um, so you can easily you know, think what happens that it's very difficult to produce public goods in a place where if you contribute, they're going to punish. Um, there is another uh, type of divide that is more uh, uh, you know, uh, closer to our, uh, uh, to, our, to our job, to our profession, that is the, the economic uh, uh, ideas. I'm borrowing here from a book from uh, 
Brunner, uh, Brunner Meyer, uh, is working on these uh, issues in trying to understand the drivers of this uh, uh, crisis. And essentially, he argues that there is a big divide between the North and the South. Uh, the North is more rule driven, uh, the South likes more uh, discretion. Uh, the North uh, stresses uh, the uh, dark side of liability, uh, the North is more about you know, solidarity. Uh, the uh, uh, South uh, is more uh, pro stimulus and Canadian type of policies, uh, uh, the North uh, is more uh, about moral hazard and austerity type of reforms. So, you know, ideas that seem to be uh, important and to split uh, Europe uh, 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 between uh, North uh, uh, and South. Now, my idea is that this is much more worrying than uh, the North-South divide uh, uh, within, uh, uh, within Europe. <coughs> and the reason is that Italy is a unified uh, country with a common set of political institutions that can potentially manage these uh, cultural differences. That is, uh, you know, it has the institutions to potentially address uh, the uh, conflict. That is not the case in, uh, uh, in Europe. Europe has very weak common political uh, institutions. So it is exposed to cultural clashes. It is exposed to the clashes of uh, economic uh, differences and economic uh, views. Uh, it is exposed to the uh, risk of poor governance to deal uh, with these uh, uh, clashes. And we are living in this type of uh, world. It's under our uh, uh, eyes. And I think that uh, all this stuff uh, played a key role in the management of, uh, the, uh, of the Greek uh, uh, crisis. And if you look at uh, the data, uh, they are quite uh, worrying and uh, remarkable. So this is the GDP per capita in uh, Germany. Uh, this is the GDP per capita in Italy. This is the GDP per capita in Greece. So the difference in GDP per capita in 2008 between Germany and Italy was uh, 2,430 euros. Also, an important uh, difference, but it's nothing compared to today's difference, which has uh, gone up, uh, and sorry, that I think I can't the number, it's 10,000 10, euros. And uh, the gap uh, in Greece was uh, 12,000 uh, euros. Uh, it has uh, gone up today to 21 and 500,000 euros. So it's a dramatic, uh, uh, you know, uh, type of uh, performance that is not sufficiently uh, stressed. So I leave you with this uh, graph, so that with this picture, so that you know, it, it gets impressed with your mind. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Cupido. Uh, so uh, I will, I don't want to monopolize the, the questions since I can see already some interest in the audience. Uh, in case I will ask other questions, but I would like to open the floor now to questions to the to speakers. Yeah. Well, if somebody has to start, I will start. <laughs> uh, Okay, it was very interesting both of the talks. And uh, we all know that, especially in, uh, you know, these days after Paris and after Bruxelles, that the very uh, you know, fragile common political institutions is also a very big problem in Europe. And we all know that Italy and Europe are full of contradictions. And, uh, when uh, Professor Guido was talking about Palermo and how big it was uh, 1,000 years ago, imagine how big it was uh, Parma or Siena in Italy just uh, 10 years ago. <coughs> the big crisis in, in, in Parma and Siena right now. So the fast way of the economy is uh, a disaster sometimes. And uh, about to be punished, people who does things are punished. Imagine if this is just a sort of a joke, but imagine that Renato Solo is a, um, is a, do you say, do you say, and, 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 yes, in Slovenia, was punished by a city council, 
and they made a concept of genetic abandon just uh, under his eyes that is probably one of the worst punish somebody can have. And so, of course, there is uh, something like that in every society. And, uh, of course, the situation about Italy and the problem between Trentino and Calabria is, uh, is a huge problem. And also, together, you know, uh, Professor Atanasio was talking about Reggio Emilia. <coughs> Emilia is a big example of a city that's going down and down. The only factory surviving in Reggio Emilia is Max Mara, uh, a fabric factory. Then the economy 